It's rain and glory. You know, rain's associated with blessing. You understand that, right? Because without rain, fruits and vegetables and plants don't grow, do they? Of course, you also have the sun. Praise God. And he brings the early and latter rain. Oh, I have a message from the Lord. <laughs> Glory. First John chapter four. <laughs> Hallelujah. First John chapter four. It's in the Bible. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell him, get the joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. But how do you get the joy? You got to get in his presence. Or you're miserable. Amen? Amen? The joy of the Lord is our strength. And in his presence is fullness of joy. So the, lack, the, the more you lack his presence, the more you lack strength. Because you lack joy. Amen? First John chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Beloved, that means he loves you. Do not believe every spirit. Hello, we can all go home now. <laughs> Don't believe every spirit. It's real simple. There's too many gullibles. Don't believe every spirit. That, you know, first of all, what spirit mean? Breath. It's associated, breath carries voice. So what he's saying, don't believe every voice. Somebody get it? But test the voices or the spirits. Whether they are of God or they're not of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard from the, which you had heard is coming and is now already in the world working on every single one. It says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome these voices. Because the voice in you, he who's in you, is greater than the voices that are in the world. That's if you're connected to the voice in you. It says, these voices are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error or deception. Again, we cannot overcome evil influence without testing the spirits, these voices. In other words, you must test your thoughts. That's a voice that comes to you. You must test your emotion. Emotions have a voice. You must test your desires. You even must test your vision because... When you see, it speaks. Is everybody okay? Amen. Why do we need to test these things? So we can make the correct interpretation and apply the decision making. Because many times people are making a decision, and I'm going to share this, Without authority. I, I'm going to share something with you. And the Lord said to me this morning, he said, listen, I want this released. 
so that there's an understanding. Of course, we all have a free will, amen? amen. We all have a, that means you have a free choice. But he said, people are making too many unauthorized decisions. Everyone say unauthorized. unauthorized. Because it's not authorized by him, it's unauthorized. Does everybody get it? They are called unauthorized decisions. Today, the powers of evil are rampant. They are increasingly taking over people from all cultures, nations, and kingdoms. Why are they taking them over? Because of what they hear. Does everybody get it? Because of what they hear. And one of the problems is the lack of presence of God. Listen, there's so much evil and wickedness in these days, you can't make it just by one time a, a week coming to the presence of God. You'll be too easily swayed and deceived. They are rampant. The powers of darkness are more evil and wicked on the earth than ever before, except for when the time of Noah's. But it says in the latter days that it will become the time of Noah. That means, you know, people are still looking at giants I'm talking about voices that these giants, when they died, left behind. It is the time of Noah. It is the time of Lot. We are in that time. So we need to have the anointing of Elijah to overcome. We need to be empowered so much with the Holy Spirit and so saturated and drenched so we are quickly discerning every voice, willing to test every voice that we hear, that we feel, that we see. In John chapter 10, is everybody okay? Thank you, dear. John chapter 10. Is everybody there? In verse 1. Everyone say, most assuredly. <laughs> I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, that same is a thief and a what? And a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. The doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. That's where the word believe means to follow because you are following the right voice. Yet they will by no means follow any voice of the stranger, but will run or flee from him. For they do not know, or they should not know, the voice of the stranger. In other words, it's not a part of their life anymore. So now you run from that voice of evil influence. Amen? Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. And he explained to him, and he says, most assuredly I say to you, I am, I, I, I am the door of the sheep. And all whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may know the, have life and that they may have it what? Life abundantly. So Jesus never came to take. He came to give. It's amazing how many people will say, well, the Lord took it away. The Lord didn't take it away. We just opened the board, door to the devil and the devil took it. God's not a taker. He's a giver. Amen? So There's something very profound here that we've got to grab hold of. Because he said that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we see that what we must discern and test everything that we're hearing and that we're seeing and everything that we're feeling. 
And once we get the interpretation, so the interpretation of these things is essential so that we follow the right voice. Amen? That's what a believer does. A believer, the word believe means says to follow. What voice are you following? That's what makes a true believer and not a true believer. Because many are still following the dictates of their hearts, their emotions, and so forth. In other words, we must get, it's essential that we apprehend this, grab hold of it, and understand it, and put it to work. Amen? Or people will become misled by making unauthorized decisions. Everyone say unauthorized decisions. Testing the voices with the word of God, amen, is essential. And ask the spirits, these voices, when they're speaking to you, you believe Jesus came in the flesh? If that devil don't say nothing to you, or you don't hear nothing, it's not God. Hello? They will not confess that, even though they lie. Testing the voices with the word of God and ask the spirits of Jesus came in the flesh. <clears throat> now, again, you will know. You would check yourself. You'll know your own fruits. You'll know how you're reacting or what you're doing by what you're hearing. Is everybody with me? If your fruits stink, you're listening to a stinky voice. Listen, what begins to happen is it will sense a manifestation of your conduct. Whether you're in order or out of order. You'll have a fruit of whether you're connected with faith or you're not. You're either walking in everything else but faith. You either trust in God or you're not trusting God. Those are the areas where you know whether you're hearing the voice of the Lord or not. I get a lot of people that come to me and tell me, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that. It's amazing that I can get five guys that come to my office in the same day and tell me all of them are going to marry the same woman. Amen. And they all heard from God. Amen. It's called the voice of lust. Amen. They got a lustafarian voice on them. Hello. Hallelujah. Listen, you can, uh, uh, again, God, when we cry out to God for help, what he does, he rest, his first process of rescuing us is to put us in a place where we can learn. Because training for reigning. Amen? You learn or you burn, one or the other. So in that, he puts us in a controlled situation where there is order. Some people have been put in controlled institutions, uh, a program, whether a drug program or whatever, amen, and they can do well amen. because a voice is provided to them. Amen. But they have the choice of either accepting the voice or rejecting the voice, amen? But the problem is, is that many times people don't apply the voice to the new life. See, so you can program anything. You can go to jail 16 times and get into 50 programs and do great in them until you step on into true life. The problem is, is never taking the voice of training that's been given in the tools into the new life. Is everybody okay? That's why God has... Bible studies, training sessions. That's why he says, forsake not to assemble. How, how many times people have missed something which could have rescued them from the decision they were getting to make? Listen, they can enter and, and again, any kind of, and do well because the voice is provided, but never apply the voice into the new life. With a new voice. Where there's a new life, there's the new voice. Amen. Amen. Amen? Either that, the individuals will always recycle. Always recycle. 
And they will live a life of manage management and not freedom. <laughs> They're maintaining managing all the time instead of free. And there's a difference between management and freedom. Why? Because they're continuing to listen to unauthor making unauthorized decisions because the voices that they're listening to. Listen, the written voice of God says, the written voice of God, this is called a written voice. That faith, which is your connection, comes by hearing his voice. Whether it's the word, amen. It never said comes by reading. comes by hearing. A lot of people read their Bible and don't change. They just get a lot of knowledge and get puffed up with pride. Oh, I know this, I know this. But they don't, they're not able, because they're not sowing it out of their mouth. It says, comes by hearing. So when the words are up here, and you've got your word before you, and you're speaking it, faith comes by hearing. Praise God. That means you're connecting. Faith comes by hearing his voice, written or verbal. So as we press into the presence through praise and worship, we are dismantling and dethroning all carnal influential voices. Because we sing the words of freedom. Amen? We hear them, and then we eat them. It's like shedding skin. New wine skin. Taking the old one off. That's what the Lord says. Before you can put new wine in, you got to take the old wine skin off. Only some have alligator skin. <laughs> Reptilian skin. They're, they're tough skinned. And it takes a longer period of time. 1 John chapter 2. unauthorized decisions. We got to start using this vocabulary to make it more sincere and more active. Is the decision I am making is authorized or not? First John chapter 2. Oh, happy day. Now, again, everybody makes a mistake, amen? amen? But there's a difference of making a mistake, and some of these decisions that we made have really hurt us, and some of us are still reaping on some of them, amen? But all things can work to the good, can't they? If you allow it. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. It says, do not love the what? The world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world... The love of the Father is not in him. Now, there is a voice of the world. Amen? For all that is in the world, he's going to give you the three categories of the voices. These are major categories. The lust of the flesh has a voice. The lust of the eyes has a voice. And the pride of life has a voice. This these voices are not of the Father, but they are what? Of the world. They're of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, and these voices will eventually pass away. But he who abides in the will of God abides forever. So the will of God has a choice of God. In other words, he who abides in an authorized decision of God Almighty will abide forever. So when you and I are abiding in the voice of God, and we're making decisions that are authorized by him, we'll abide forever. But if we're making unauthorized decisions, we'll have trouble. And if we keep it up, we can walk right away and recycle back into the world. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, those are three categories. They are major categories of influence of evil voices. When the human will is not totally surrendered or if it's there is a mixture then or of part spirit and part flesh part soul there will be division there's division somebody get it there's division in the heart when there's a mixture 
and it causes the temple or the individual to recycle into the worldly ways and manifest unauthorized choices or decisions. It's like trying to put oil in the water, you know, it's always one's trying to take over the other. In Mark 3, Mark 3.23. So Jesus called them to himself and he said to them in parables. How can what? Satan cast out Satan. Is everybody there? Mark 3, verse 23. Verse 24. If the, a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot what? It can't stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has given up, uh, risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will be able to plunder his house. In other words, a house divided cannot stand, and that's what these voices try to do. They try to bring a mixture and cause division in your heart. Not only can it stand, but it can't even stand yourself. A house divided cannot stand against the evil influence until all evil influence of flesh, soul, and spirit is removed. But it's first got to be recognized. If it isn't recognized, how are you going to know? And the more sensitive you are to these things is because the more presence of God that's with you. The less presence of God that is with you, the less sensitive you will be. 2 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. Unauthorized decisions. That really targets it. It pinpoints it. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. What does it say? Examine yourself as whether you are connected or not or in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Hmm. For we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. And this we pray that you may be made complete. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should be used sharpness, <laughs> sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction." Again, examine yourselves if your decisions, conduct, attitude, motive, and desires are pleasing to God. But if you don't take the time to examine yourself, you will walk in deception. Examination should come every single moment. Every morning, every decision, everything you're doing, there should be always a recycling of examination. Gosh, Lord, am I doing what pleases you? Am I saying what, did I just say what pleases you? Did I, does everybody understand? See, now you have, the, again, if there's not a connection and if the Lord is not before you, then there's no relationship. If you're not acknowledging him and talking to him in everyday issues, then there's really no relationship. And that's what he wants. He wants relationship. He wants us to examine ourselves. What are the things that we're doing are pleasing God? And whether we're making decisions and choices are authorized by him. Or you become disqualified. 
Amen? What are you disqualified for the blessing? You become disqualified of inheritance and freedom. You become more bound. Many refuse to examine themselves, but are willing to examine everyone else. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's where people fall in a blame game. They blame everybody else for their lack of examination, self-examination. In fact, it started in the garden, you know. Amen? Remember when the serpent deceived them? First of all, Adam blamed his wife. Amen. Then a wife blamed a serpent. Amen? The blame game started right then and there. In Galatians chapter 6. She made me do it. Oh, he made me do it. <laughs> and then the Lord finally said, Who, what was the end result of all of that? Who told you that? Wow. Amen? Who told you that? That was the end result. In other words, what voice were you listening to? Amen. An unauthorized voice brought down the whole mankind. An unauthorized decision brought down all mankind, promoted by an unauthorized voice. Amen? Oh, snap it. Galatians 6, is that what I said? Good, I know it's in here. Galatians 6, verse 1. You know, we've all fallen in the area of regret. Amen? When we look back, it's amazing how we can truly see what we did. But it's at the moment that we need to see so we don't have a regret. <laughs> Verse 1, let's speak it. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall receive his, his own what? Uh, each one shall share or bear his own load. Let him who taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God's not mocked. Whoever, whatever a man sows, he's going to what? Reap. Hello. For he sows to the flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit, will the spirit reap everlasting life. And don't go grow weary. In other words, keep sowing. Keep singing. Keep speaking the words of life. Keep assembling. Keep get connected with God's presence. And don't blame no one else for your lack. Jesus came to bring life and the life abundantly. Hello? He didn't come to steal, kill, and destroy. He came to bless your socks off. Hallelujah. Avoid self-promotion, self-protection, self-exaltation. <laughs> That's called pride, pride and arrogance, isn't it? Avoid it. Take responsibility. Hallelujah. Take accountability. And get in the word of counsel, word of truth, and the word of life, what is able to change your life so that you can begin to discern what is of the voice of God and what is not. Again, if you're not examining yourself, everyone else is. Because they'll know whether you're fruity granola or rotten, rotten fruit. Amen? Proverbs 3. Whether you're listening to the stinky voice or not. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5.
you know, when you think about it, when the Lord said to Adam, who told you that? In other words, what right do you have to make that decision? Who told you that? You accepted an unauthorized voice that made an unauthorized decision. Hallelujah. Verse 5, let's speak it together. What does it say? Trust, 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 trust. Listen, again, when things begin to, when the flood starts to come, don't fall into offense. Don't fall into rejection. Don't fall, just trust you, Lord. I trust you. I trust, start saying it. Why? Because you're changing the atmosphere of all the other voices that is trying to come to get food. Because they're trying to feed off of your emotion. Amen? So just start saying, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. I don't care what I'm thinking, I don't care what I'm feeling, and I don't care what I'm seeing. Because those are all voices that are trying to promote an author unauthorized decision. I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. Now, again, you can't start drinking and doing dope and whatever and say, I trust you, I trust you. <laughs> Hello. You got to depart from those things. Amen. Depart from evil, then trust him. Amen. Just get the heck out of there. And I trust you, Lord, while you're watching pornography. That ain't going to work. Proverbs 3, verse one, 5 again. I'm sorry. Trust in the Lord with what? Part of your heart? All of your heart. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do what? Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, what? Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Everybody got it? Let's verse 5 and 6 again. Let's speak it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. In other words, what do you want to do? You want to stop leaning on all these other voices and past experiences of other voices. Does everybody get it? We want to stop leaning on them. Come on in out of the rain. We want to start trusting. First of all, we got to start trusting in the voice of the Lord. Acknowledge Him. And He will what? He's going to cause you to make what? Right decisions. Okay, verse 7. Don't be what? Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. For it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with what? New wine. My son, do not despise chastening, correction of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Why? Why does God give us correction? So we make what? Right decisions. Amen? So we need to trust in with all of our hearts. Don't lean on your own understanding. Your own understanding is your own interpretation and perception through the carnal way. In all of your ways, acknowledge. In other words, ask, seek, and knock. It's amazing that all of those words end with a K. It means knock out, man. In all of your ways, KO. <laughs> then what? He'll direct your path. And what's he going to do? He's going to release authorized choices or decisions. I want to give you an example. There's two children in the house. One is submissive. One isn't. One gets the whip. The other gets the blessing. But it's still under the same love. Amen? No difference. That's, let me give you another example. 
look at yourself as a pilot of a plane. You're the pilot of the plane, and the Lord is the, um, what is he? Air traffic. air traffic controller. That's it. So the Lord is the air traffic controller. You're the pilot of the plane. You're carrying God's precious people. Amen. You're carrying his precious cargo. You're on a mission. Amen? Amen. Now, hmm. So we are the pilots. Of, we are the pilots of God. We carry cargo precious. We are guided by God, the air traffic controller. If we make an unauthorized turn or a stop, it can become disastrous, can it? Without acknowledging the tower of operation before making a decision, it becomes unauthorized. Consequences will occur. Every time. Even at your job. Amen? Think about that. When you're working for someone, you take the, and you're being given, and you got a, um, a company car. So you, the company car, um, they, they find out that you're at the bar at night. You're to go pick up something and come back, and they find out that you stopped in locations. Now, again, the problem is, is that there was no acknowledgement, no communication. In other words, no approval. So when there's, an auth when there's no approval, it's an authorized, unauthorized decision. And there's consequences to them. Amen? Anything that we do that's unauthorized will give a check. The Lord will check. In other words, you're either earning this trust or losing it. Amen. Not that all things can't work to the good. Amen. And they will. The more that you do the right things in that area, you're making, uh, making decisions that are authorized by him. He's going to start, man, you're going to find things change. The devil won't have access to steal, kill, and destroy. You will have life abundantly. Psalm 32. I believe many sicknesses are caused by unauthorized decisions. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Verse 1, Psalm 32. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. cursed. Anybody want to be cursed? I'm glad. Blessed is he who what? Whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered by the blood. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and whose spirit there is no deceit or deception. He says, when I kept silent, my bones grew old. Through my groaning all the day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. Why? Because he didn't confess his sin yet. Amen. Look at verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in the flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of what? Deliverance. Hello, what do you think these songs are with the words? They bring deliverance to you. I will instruct you and teach you, he says, in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule with no understanding which must be harnessed with a bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows shall be the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy all you upright in heart. In other words, confess your sins. Sin is the presence of evil. It's not the act. When you sin because you've been influenced by the presence of evil, 
When you act on it, it becomes what we call a transgression. When you transgress, it brings a curse on you called an iniquity, which goes on you and down your family line until it's broke. So it goes to your children and everywhere else until it is broke. That's why if you've ever noticed, inherited sicknesses and diseases and addictions come down the family line, don't they? Amen. Because nobody's broke them. In fact, when Daniel was praying one day, he kept saying, the Lord, or I think it was in Jeremiah, he kept saying, Lord, why is this still happening? He said, because nobody's ever repented for the sins of the forefathers. Amen. And when he did, it broke off and they got cut loose. It's vitally important for parents to do those things. But again, my, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They go to church, become religion. But there really isn't that relationship to know God's voice. So we're to confess our sins. Sin is the voice of evil. It's evil influence. The Lord said he will instruct you when you confess it. He'll guide you with authority and authorized decisions of victory, prosperity, and glory to his name. It has to come something with called true repentance. Everyone say true repentance. That means it's deep enough to never go back to the old way again. Never cover up sin or justify it or blame someone else for your lack of self-examination. Always repent. Amen? Because what will happen will cause you to miss the blessings of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 4. First Corinthians 4. Unauthorized decisions. Now you may argue with God. Well, Lord, you gave me a free will. He did. He gave you a free will to choose his will. Amen? Amen? Not yours. Remember, when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you gave up your life. You gave it up. It's amazing that people are still fighting for their life instead of surrendering it. Well, we want to fight for his presence. Not for our life anymore. We want to surrender our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Everyone say, I'm a steward. A steward is one who handles the things of God, responsible, like they're your own. We carry mysteries. Those are hidden truths that have been revealed to us. Those are precious to the Lord. Those are called treasures. It says, let them consider us as servants to the anointing and stewards to the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. Faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am justified by this. But he who judges me is who? The Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from who? The Lord. So again, we are stewards that reject unauthorized decisions. We will reject them. We will seek the decisions that are approved by God because it's, it's, it's not, anything that's not backed by God is backed by what? Evil. Amen? Everything pertaining to the kingdom of God, it's called kingdom business must be authorized. Amen? There isn't anything involved in the kingdom of God that he doesn't authorize in that area that's approved by him. Now, how many of y'all know that there's a timing for everything? So if something that's not in God's timing, even though it's pertaining to the word of God and truth, if it's not his timing, will he authorize it? No. That's where many people falter. They move out of God's time because they're misled by the voice of deception. 
And God has then authorized it, and then trouble comes. Second Peter chapter 1. I've heard many testimonies about people trying to go rescue someone in, who, in a bar who just quit drinking or in a crack house who just quit using crack. They go to rescue them and they don't come back because God didn't send them to do it. But they didn't hear the right voice, did they? Oh, hallelujah. Because God's will is God's time. 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 2. Then one more scripture. Unauthorized decisions. How many of you all know that, look at that, one of the things the enemy loves to do is set traps up. And when he sets a trap up, Trap, trap of offense, amen? Trap of discouragement, trap of rejection. All of these traps, what the enemy tries to do, once he sets the trap up and we fall into the trap, because the word says that we will go through trials. It says count it all joy when you do, not if you do. So you're going to. Because we live in a world that's corrupt. So you're going to go through stuff. The enemy's going to try and do everything he can to mislead you, prevent you from growing and maturing, and to prevent you from doing the will of God, surrendering your life. He's going to do all these things. As soon as he sets the trap up, he sends all of these voices to you. Every time. What's he trying to do is cause you to make an unauthorized decision. And so what is he trying to do? He's always trying to fetch you emotionally. Spirits, demons get fed by emotion. Fear is an emotion. Anxiety, stress, anger, hatred. Jealousy, rage, envy, all of these things are led by emotions. So the enemy is always trying to create chaos so he can get fed and then causes you to make an unauthorized decision. He's not stupid in those areas. He's been around for a while. But he cannot outwit the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit tells you all things to come. But if you're not in relationship and filled with the Spirit of God, you won't be able to interpret or even discern that voice that speaks to you. Again, if you're not monitoring, monitoring the voice, the thoughts, your feelings, and the things that you see, if you're not monitoring those things and determining whether they're authorized or unauthorized, then you'll be misled. Again, I really believe because people make so many unauthorized decisions that sickness and disease come upon them addiction, and all kinds of other things. Terrible things come upon them. Why? Because what happens is they make enough of those unauthorized decisions, the protection of the Lord gets lifted. What's he trying to do? Get their attention. Get their attention. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Verse 2. Grace and peace be what? multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, in the what? In the knowledge of God and of, Lord, of Jesus our Lord. As His divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. In other words, by knowing him, that's what he's saying, saying knowledge is knowing him. By knowing him through the knowledge, you'll know his ways, his desires, his purpose, his will for you. Then what happens is we become so filled with the area of knowing what he wants without even asking. You won't even ask things because you know they're not approved. Or you know that it's not his time. Does everybody understand that? You'll know it. And because of these areas of unauthorized decisions, again, that brings us into a place of disaster. Amen? So when we begin to know him more and more and more, and we begin to see and understand more of his authorized decisions that are approved, 
by him, we partake of his divine nature. Somebody get that? We partake of, of his divine nature just because we know him more. The more you know him, the more you partake of him. The more you hang with someone, that's why the word says be careful who you hang with, right? Bad company corrupts good habits. Associations bring what? Impartations. Even the Lord, what did he do when, when the people wanted a king and they chose Saul to become the king? What did he do? He put him around all the prophets where the anointing was because he said, you can't serve me like that, homie. He said, you're a mess. You're, you're still human. And you can't serve me in your human condition. So he sent him with the prophets so the anointing came upon him and he began to prophesy with him and then he was anointed. Does everybody get it? And we'll close at Psalm 31. So again, the more you press into God's presence, the more you change. I didn't say you would feel like it right away. Didn't even tell you would think like it. But the more you do it, the more you do it, the more all of a sudden it could be four or five times, sometimes whatever. Next thing you know, you're, you're making decisions that you wouldn't have made before. In fact, you're rejecting decisions that you would have accepted before. Listen, we are in critical times now. Very critical. You will hear me speak this over and over and over. There are things happening globally. There is a tremendous awakening happening. And what the enemy wants to do is put you back to sleep. In verse 1, let's speak it. And you, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. How many of y'all know that we become ashamed when we make unauthorized decisions? Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your namesake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me, for you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated those who regard useless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. For you have considered my trouble. You have known my soul in adversities and have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a wide place. Wow. Well, listen, the things that he was asking is so that he could reject unauthorized decisions. Amen. He could discern that voice. We will maintain, as we maintain in a connection with the Lord, we will have more victories. More things will be released. It says, the word says, when you fulfill the promise, when you fulfill what he's asked you to do, he will release the promise to you. Many people are trying to get the promises of God without fulfilling what he's asked them to do. It don't work that way. You'll wait forever. You'll wait till you die. You'll have to wait till you get home. If you make it. Amen. Unauthorized decisions, let that be a part of your vocabulary and your thoughts from this day forward. Unauthorized decision. Is that an unauthorized decision or is it authorized by him? Amen. Check with the tower. And stay on the right glide path. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed that's been imparted in us be protected by the blood of Christ and grow and bear fruit for your glory. Let it penetrate every part of our being and members. In the name of Jesus, that will be constantly before us as we set you before us, Lord, that we will discern what is your voice, what is not your voice, what is approved and disapproved by you so that we make decisions that are authorized by you from this day forward in Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?